Hi everybody! Everybody's starting a live video. Welcome to Age of Quarantine here at the St. Vitus Bar Live. Oh, there's Brian. He's already here. Um, how's everybody doing? Hanging in there. Hope. Dealing with bullshit. We're gonna get right to Brian Meehan right now. Wah! Wah! It's Brian Meehan, uh, old friend of mine, guitar player of many a band, uh, most notably in my life, Millhouse and Loyal to None, uh, as well as Kill Your Idols, um, and uh, an old bud. It's connecting, and things are happening. I figured out the internet. I know that was way too easy. <laughs> I always, I always say, like, the biggest problem I ever had was like Jay Robbins and uh, anybody who was like just too old. Although oh, Jay, Robbins, I guess. that's me. <laughs> You are older than me. That's true, I believe. Yes. Yes. By probably at least four years. Yeah. Nice. Enjoy. Are you 50? No. 48. 40. Oh, you got me by a year. All right. Fair oh, enough. There you go. How you doing, man? I'm exhausted. I've been up since four. How about yourself? Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to keep you up. <laughs> no, no. You're not keeping me up. I'm just exhausted all the time now. Oh, yeah. You, uh, you're working, right? You haven't stopped working this whole time, right? I, I actually stopped for a few months because um, I was working uh, past the, when everything got shut down and then my partner got sick and I had to self-quarantine and then I went back to work and the city was a ghost town and then my job got shut down, shut down and, and it was... Uh, it was uh, deemed not um, essential enough. So I wound up going home for a while. They, my shop offered me a hospital in Queens to work at, but that's the last place I wanted to be during that. I would imagine, yeah. So um, you, you're a uh, union carpenter or? Electrician. Electrician. Okay. Electrician. Yeah, that's a good, yep. that's a good job. That was, a, that was a wise choice way back when well i think i remember when you, I, when you went into that and then i left it so i can you know tour, tour with millhouse like be, be an idiot yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh we've yes. uh, we've known each other for 28 years i guess maybe 1992 91 i'd say 91 90 yeah yeah and it, like Damn. you were in loyal to none at that time, had that started? Yeah. yeah okay. Mm -hmm. I was I'm trying to remember like how how that all came about because I remember you know obviously you guys were all, you guys were from Queens like you and Chris, um, right? And Brian, but Brian's oh. lived down the he lived down the road from the angle, and mm -hmm. he was Sorry. like, oh, this place started doing shows. So we would go to sh the shows after practice, right, right? And then I would start calling um, your house and harassing Artie to get us to play a show there, <laughs> because the only other shows we were playing, I think, were at Hammerheads. And I was like, something's got to be better than this. <laughs> and then well, definitely. What uh, what was your background at that time? I mean, I, and I'm I just want to say this, like, just to get it out of the way. Um, Obviously, we've known each other a long time. I have a shit ton of respect for you. Um, I think oh. that you're one of the more, or one of the more original guitar players from that scene. Um, okay. I, 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 I uh, you just have a style of your own that I mean, and I'm, I'm sure you're not unlike me in the untrained style where it's like, yeah, you're not very good at playing other people's shit but you can play your own shit really well. And then other people aren't very good at playing your shit because it's super fucking weird. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I'll thank you very much. And you know, you are one of the guitar players that I've always looked up to. So that's a very big compliment coming from you. Well, I mean, dude, you, trust me. I was, I was looking at you, the, what you were doing and, and I always found it to be like really obtruse, weird, um, and, 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 you know, obviously I know the history of other guitar players you've played with and bands that you've played in and like you, it, it reminded me very much of myself in like anybody who plays with me has to be sort of either incredible 
because they <laughs> they have to figure out the most the weirdest shit ever that makes no sense right or they have to be completely fucking untrained and like literally suck and just start with well, my shit <laughs> yeah. I, I think we've both been fortunate enough to surround ourselves with great players like fuck yeah yeah, especially you know, we've shared Scott Martin, and yes. well, that's he's key. He's very key because I'd be like, "Hey, I'll show you this," and he's like, "Don't worry," and he just knows he's he's not yeah, normal. He's not. I've always, that. I've always well the thing about Scott, and this was like the thing that Mind Over Matter did, and and I'm sure you learned this pretty quickly when you started playing with him, is that he's he's actually a real bass player. Yeah, you know, he's he's not some guy who just like picked up the bass so that he could like play along to the guitar. It's not how he works. Like he's a real bass player, and therefore he was writing bass lines around guitar lines. So it was in turn teaching us how to actually write songs. You know, and yes. and, and uh, I, I I I've always given him a tremendous amount of credit for what he did for a lot of the bands on Long Island and for us. And it's like you know I I don't think that. That that you know, a, a lot of people d d they just get the visceral part of the Long Island hardcore thing, but we were so different from all the other bands, which is why I want to get back to like, where were you at, like, what shows were you going to, what were you doing when you started, say, Loyal to None, like what? Well, I back then I was um, Tom and Loyal to None and myself. We were we went to high school with Javier from Born Against, so we were going to see Born Against and bands like that. But at the same time, I would go and see the Grill Biscuits and stuff. So my, you know, I was all over the spectrum of, you know, different kinds of hardcore. Right. So, I mean, but you weren't, I, I mean, when I met you, I don't think you were straight. I mean, I don't want to use the word straight edge because that's lame, but like, you know, I, <laughs> I don't think you were straight at that time. And I actually remember when you stopped drinking, um, <laughs> which was probably for the best. Uh, oh, yeah. Like, like many of our friends uh, who stopped drinking, uh, you know, like nobody, everybody got real down and depressed. <laughs> which was kind of, yeah. And, and yeah. I was always like, what the fuck? We're having fun, you know? Um, no, I, 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 rem I think I remember the night you're talking about. And yeah, it was definitely for the best. Yes, yes, I, I, I vividly remember it actually, which is shocking. I must have been driving, because I never drank and drove. But um, anyway, so so you were going to those shows, and you guys all met in high school and just started playing. And like, it, well, it's I, like, did you feel any connection? Because I don't think Chris was really part of the hardcore scene. No, he was more of a metal dude, but he, you know, he appreciated a lot of the the the, the more. I'm not gonna say talented, but the more creative uh, hardcore bands, he would he would gravitate towards that. Like he loved Mind Over Matter, he loved Neglect, um, he he was big into Agnostic Front. So there was a lot of there was a a lot that we uh, had a bind over, and you know, and Tom and Brian and myself, we would all you know make tapes for each other because that's what we did back then, and be like, oh, check this out, and then. You know, we would, we would all go to shows together, and like we were, we were a tight knit band. You know, which doesn't happen very often anymore because you know you get older, you have families and stuff. Well, yeah, of course, and you guys became tight knit with all of us on Long Island. Yes, um, and we're very much brought into. You know, I mean, did you did eventually live? Uh, did you live in Lindenhurst? I, I remember going to your place. No, I never was, lived on Long Island. I, Shit, nope. man, I'm wrong. You, man. It was, you, must, maybe it was Leah's house. It must have been Leah's house. I don't know. I, I, Probably. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's you guys were very embraced in the scene, and um, which you know, which was awesome because that would lead to so many great bands that came out right. of uh, of the, the the ashes of Loyal to None. Um, Loyal to None put out one seven inch and one split. Was that yes? Yeah. yeah okay. All right. Yeah, I was trying to look for my copy of the seven inch. I know I still have it somewhere. And I was going through my records today and I was like, I'm looking through my records and I'm like, fuck, like all the shit's worth so much, but my records are so beat up. They're so beat up. Like oh. the covers are all fucked up. And I'm like, oh shit, I couldn't sell this if I tried. Like, 
<laughs> You'd be surprised. Yeah, yeah, but probably somebody would buy my neglect LSS green vinyl for eight zillion dollars in Belgium or something. But you know. <laughs> um, so at the so you were you like collecting records at the time? I mean, like I know because I lived with Artie at the time, and you know, like you guys right. obviously eventually played in multiple bands together. Um, yes. How uh, like. Were you gravitating more towards the born against style or that that sort of thing? Because that's obviously that's where well, Millhouse kind of lived in the lifeblood yeah, we born against style. Right. I mean, that's, we, we, that's where I I went right for there. That that was both of those bands were where I was aiming. Yeah, and it's uh, and you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh man. No, but like, like yeah. Uh, um, so, so how did how did Mill? What, so between Loyal to None and Millhouse, what what happened? All right. Um, Loyal to None fell apart because we were getting more and more busy, and uh, Chris was like, "Listen, you know, you you guys have uh, this vision that we're gonna do more and more stuff." He's like, "And my job and." You know, my life is just going in a different direction. So, you know, we just ended. And at the same time, I think I saw Artie play with No Thought oh, right. at the end. And I was like, what he's doing and the, the band's doing is two different things. And I was like, I'm going to eventually start something with him. And then I, um, I, I told Artie after a show, I was like, you and I should do a band together more like this. And he was like, I'm in it. Let's do it. And we never did anything. And then Artie introduced me to Andrew Orlando. And Andrew was like, you know, let's do it. Let's do it. And he was the driving force. So I was driving to his place in Queens. And we would sit there and just try to, like, uh, write guitar parts. And let's see. Then I think Pete, uh, Pete Chicado was on the bass. And originally yeah. we had Brian Schroeder, if you remember Brian, on of the course. drums. Yep. And I think he practiced with us twice, and then Dave Patricios came into the mix. Oh yeah, the real Millhouse. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and and, and I talk about people that were too too good for us. That Dave is outrageous. Oh yeah, he's like he was incredible. And he had to be so patient with me because my my creativity outweighs my technical ability by a mile. So he helped keep me on track by uh, playing to me and keeping it, you know, steady. So what do you mean by that? I mean, I, I kind of get it where like what's going through your head is not what's coming through your fingers. Yes. And like, like how hard did you have to work to make that work for yourself? I was not only um, playing stuff that I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to recreate this, but I was trying to write songs above my ability just to like challenge myself. And so like, cause I knew at some point I would get there. And then once I got there, it was, you know, it was second nature. So I, that's how I would personally get myself to progress. Right. And uh, so, I mean, yeah, I would imagine that that was probably really frustrating for other people in the room trying to oh, write. God. And and I was, all, you remember me back then, I was way, I was so tightly wound. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, it was, I was a nightmare to be in a band with. Well, you and Artie were both like pretty. Yeah, it was I mean, bad. Just straight mean. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it, it, it like, was. I, I got, I got uh, that you, you guys wanted a certain thing, you know, and, and uh, I, the, the, the results were, uh, were really were legendary. In my mind, I think Millhouse was a band that like was a little too late in the game from uh, our, our, from, from what we, from our world, the er that early nineties was so much different sounding than the, from 95 on with Sound Majority and whatnot and, and it i mean you know it, we still had vod so vod was doing sort of like they still had the ignorant breakdowns and shit and 
you know, and uh, Saw Majority was doing more of a lifetime thing. And Millhouse was carrying on the Born Against uh, sort of legacy. And I, I don't like that sort of weirdly fell out of favor. You know, it was like it wasn't emo enough to be emo. Right. Well, but but what it, what it, it served a purpose oh. a lot on Long Island. You know what I mean? Like as far as evening things out on a sound way, sound way you know, like. Right. We I always thought that we weren't hardcore for the hardcore kids. We weren't weird enough for the weird kids. And we kind of just fell into this weird um, abyss. Right. You which, know, which our told... records looked too slick. You know, it was, <laughs> there was a whole, there was, there, there was a whole thing that was just like, oh, you have a hardcore, uh, hardcore on your record. You know, I don't, I'm not even going to listen to this. Was, How much? It wasn't easy. How much touring did Millhouse do? We did a, uh, a lot of East Coast stuff, and we did two full US, full U.S. tours, and we toured Europe. And how, like, did, did you find that you were known anywhere else? I mean, I know it was difficult for a lot of the exit wreckage bands in America. Oh, yeah. What, what about Europe? Was it, was it better over there? Europe, it was, it was pretty good. I had a great time, you know, and I didn't even care if there was, you know, 10 people there, like, or 100 people there, you know, I was going to do what we were doing. But the one thing that scared me was Artie was like, I was over here with Mind Over Matter. They expect you to play a very long set. And we, you know, we packed a lot into a short amount of time. So now we're trying to extend it. And that led to more Artie banter. And that was <laughs> never good. That was never a good thing, especially in Europe. That was ugh. so. Did you did you encounter? Is there any got any stories to to tell about um about the Artie banter? I mean, I I do, but I... <laughs> oh, I know you do. Um, <laughs> no, not nothing. I can nothing I can say without incriminating this whole. <laughs> um, no, how much was, shit? How much shit did he steal from gas stations? <laughs> oh, that was, that was all of us though. We were just we would come back and unload. That's how <laughs> that's how we lived. It was fucking hysterical. So so yeah. Millhouse, um, Millhouse put two two full lengths out, right? And one full length, one full and length, a bunch of splits, and upsetting and the milk, and it's, all right, yeah, and. Um, where did that go? How did that dissipate? What? what... Um, all right. Um, so we were, the last U.S. tour we did was with Indecision um, and Silent Majority. And it was pretty, like, you, you think that would be a pretty decent tour. It really wasn't. Some places it was great. Other places didn't even know we were coming through. So it was kind of rough. Wait, was that, the, that tour? Was that the tour where and... everybody got their, got their merch stolen? Or was it? Yeah, All that, right. that yeah, happened yeah. too. Um, not merch, but um, like Tom Sheen lost a bunch of uh, personal belongings. They broke into our van, brought daylight in uh, Vancouver, I think. And we saw one of the guys <laughs> running with stuff. So we chased them down. <laughs> Artie threw a muffin at the guy's head. You know, it was, <laughs> it was typical. Um, so during that tour, Indecision was having problems, um, and they wound up asking Artie to take over on vocals when we got home. I hurt my knee, if you remember. I remember that, uh, yeah. Skateboarding, on tour, and I tore my eight, had to have surgery, and it was a big nightmare. So I'm sitting at home, um, waiting for my surgery, doing uh, pre-surgery rehab because my knee was the size of a basketball. And Artie joins Indecision. And I was, at that point, I was like, all right, we're done. You know, I know it. And they're like, no, no, no. Because he had uh, Matt, Matt Grandy filling in on drums for that tour. And he was leaving at the end. So we needed to find a drummer. So that was just not going to happen either. So we kind of just dissolved. And Artie went on and did Indecision. Got it. I was, so yeah, I, that was yeah. I, I mean, so Collins didn't do that tour with you. 
I, I only bring up Collins because he no, he, no, no, he's bartending right now a block away. So <laughs> no, I love Greg. I miss Greg. Greg, Greg and I uh, would get into arguments uh, over song arrangements. Like oh my he, God. he, for the most part, he he knew what I was doing and knew what I wanted, and I loved him for that. But then there was a couple of songs that had really weird time signatures that were completely accidental on my part. But when we were recording them, um, Davide and Ian Love were like, yeah, what is this in like three, seven? Do you listen to a lot of yes? And I'm like, what? No. I do. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I was like, oh, you think I'm Marty Shepard? <laughs> um, so Greg, when we were writing that song, Greg was like, he's like, you gotta, he's like, you gotta go to the fucking store and you need to buy a goddamn drum time signature book and learn what the hell you're doing and i was like i was like nope i was like you need to untrain your brain yeah and listen to the music oh dude listen I, I, to what's happening wait there's a, a what is it changes i think it's changes they hung up at five and we like my partner invited us george when we used to work at matchless we were there with like do 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 it's like it's impossible to do the time signature of it but he'd be like no figure it out figure it out and greg would be like it's not a fucking time signature it's a fucking part and he'd be banging on the fucking bar and shit no no classic love it no. <laughs> fucking greg he's hysterical <laughs> but, uh, he's he's a south slope fixture uh, over here but uh he's okay. he's since stopped drinking so he's uh he's a lot better these days <laughs> um so, so Millhouse calls it, and what goes from there? Right. I mean, you um, know, like, what, right. what, what year are we talking? I'm it's still, like, it's uh, like, we're, we're at 98 now, or something like that? Right? 98, yeah, 98, going into 99. Um, my knee, I'm still rehabbing it, doing everything I can. Um, Jim Connaboy was uh, playing drums for Kill Your Idols, and he messaged me on, I think, AOL, and he was like, hey, you don't have a band. We're looking for a second guitarist, Kill Your Idols. And he's like, you, he's like, get in touch with Gary. I was like, all right, let me see what that's about. So I messaged Gary. Gary's like, come on down. He's like, try to learn um, this, uh, the 12-inch EP. So I learned it. I went and I uh, sat with Gary. We went over stuff. The hardest thing for me was going to the house to kill your idols because it's all straight timing and i was like my hand was going like super fast i was like all right i gotta slow down i had to learn how to play in that groove and it took me a while but you know it, that all worked out yeah and, I, was, I was gonna say like kill your idols uh, like you're uh gary's an incredible guitar player so none of it was like as, it, as he's too good as simple as kill your idols might sound to the ear it's actually not no, and get, Gary's so good. My, my, my whole the the whole time I played with them and Gary, I was just trying to not play so badly that I would make him sound bad because <laughs> ruined. Because I, I enjoyed the band. Like they they reminded me of going to shows when I was younger, and I was like, I would, and they asked me to play. I was like, yeah, that would be fun. And I I feel I I all. I wonder often if when I joined, because I started bringing um, a melodic sense to what Gary was playing, you know, I always wondered if I was helping them or hurting them because people loved the early raw stuff that they did. And then when I joined, if we got all two guitars and I never knew like if I was doing the right thing or the, or the wrong thing. So... Right. I mean, it, it's, you know, you know, it's uh, Kill, Kill Your Idols is a band that's had a lot of periods, you know, <laughs> so um, yeah, it's that's yeah. totally that's totally OK, you know, I, I, and then they turned into a black metal band. So, you know, it uh, it, it all worked <laughs> out. It all worked out in the end. But uh, nice. I, I mean, did you like so did you quit Kill Your Idols or? Well, I wound up I wound up um the band ended and then I played a few reunions. Right, right. And I then I just, um, 
Gary and I stopped. Um, they basically asked me, you know, we said we're going to go on without you. And I was like, all right, that, you know, that works. It's, it's not the easiest because I, I live in Jersey now and they practice on Long Island and, you know, they're still going and, you know, I'm, I couldn't be happier for them because, you know, I think it's, it's very key because there's a lot of kids that um, are getting into them now that didn't get a chance to see them. And now they can. Right. Because they have such a catalog and I think they were an important band. Yeah, I, 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 I totally agree. I mean, I think that they brought a sound, an old school sound to a lot of young kids who were right for it, who didn't really know or understand, you know, there's, there's, there's a series of bands throughout the years that, that kind of do that, where it's like, hey, oh, I really like this band. Well, if, if you really like this band, then you have to go back and listen to Gorilla Biscuits. And, you know, the Gorilla Biscuits in Youth of Today and AF and Crow Mags, these are all like sort of like the classic, the classic rock bands of hardcore. And right. whenever, <laughs> whenever, whenever somebody does that style well, that kind of brings the young kids back into the fold and it just perpetuates right. itself. It's it's not unlike what the Beatles have done for years or, you know, like it's, there's always going to be that legacy. I personally can't stand that style of music, but that's just me. Um, <laughs> I, I, I definitely like, I, I like Kill Your Idols because um, I, I thought that there was a edge to it and Gary's guitar playing is always different and interesting, you know, but yeah. I always, yeah. if, I, if, I, if I'm going to talk about hardcore, I surely will talk about Born Against uh, or Poison Idea. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like it, th those bands were way more interesting to me than, than that straight up New York hardcore shit. Cause I don't know. Uh, right. Maybe I was just too exposed to it. No, I, don't know. Okay. I, I get it. Yeah. I, um, so, so while I was in. Go for it. Go on. Oh, I was going to say, while I was in Killer Idols, um, members were changing here and there, and Mike D wound up playing the bass and also started uh, Celebrity Murders at the same time. And he, he had that going on, and I was like, I belong in this band. Put me in this band. And he was <laughs> like, okay, sounds good. So, um, and that's when Celebrity Murders started doing a lot and we had a seven inch and full length out. And that's that full length to this day is one of my, the best things I've ever played on. Really fucking good, man. And, and a continuation of Millhouse that's, in, in a lot of ways, you know, uh, obviously right. same singer, um, uh, the addition of Mike D and that whole thing is fucking fantastic. Uh, I, I yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, Mike D I've known longer than you, I think. And it's like, like, just like Probably. that was that that band is fucking like, just great. But obviously, you guys were in a different it, spot in life, so you know, there's only so much you yeah. can do. But I mean, we did as much as we could, and the sound that came out was just like pure like violence. It sounded like violence, and you never knew what was going to happen on stage. Artie and Sean like kicking each other, biting each other while they're playing. You know, you, you never, like, they could have just started th punching each other at the same time. It was always, it was always dangerous. And that's, and that's what I loved about it. Like, it, it was, you know, that band playing those songs was a workout. It was, yeah, it was and great. It's, it's, a, deeply. it's a shame it couldn't have toured more. And, you know, like, how much, how much touring did you guys do? We would do, we were just doing weekends, you know, as much as we could, like Virginia and stuff like that. I wish, I really wish we could have gone out West and, you know. Have saw, you, have you, uh, have you experienced, have you towns. experienced a lot of love for that band in retrospect? Has there been like. It's, you know, a lot of people like will randomly like bring it up and all and it that always gets me psyched because i really think that record should have been uh bigger than it it was i mean uh, I, will I, will uh, change the, did a great job with it 
and it, it just ah, damn it. Get yeah, no, out. I mean the the bands that I that I are the most proud of and that I felt about the best records are the bands that got no attention at all. And it's like, you know, it's, uh, but it's okay. a, so much of that is about timing and the, where you're surrounded by and how much you can promote it and what label it's on and all that other shit. So, I mean, nowadays it's a whole different ball right. game. So moving into nowadays. So, uh, I mean, what the fuck are you doing right now? Like you're, you got like eight fucking records coming out. Uh, I do. And it's, um, <laughs> well, I wasn't doing anything. And I was, and then Nate Wilson calls me up. Nate from Devoid of Faith, Monster X. He, yeah, yeah. He uh, calls me. He's like, "Hey, would you want to play bass in a band that sounds like Celtic Frost?" I was like, "Go on." And <laughs> he was just like, "It's totally like you know, relax. We practice like once or twice, you know, a month, whatever." I was like, "Yeah, why not?" And he sent me this. I learned them. We practiced, and. uh we wound up getting ready to record. We were ready to record. We had uh, a little Anthony uh, Corallo coming to coming out here with his mobile studio to record us. And then that was the day of the shutdown. So uh, we canceled that. And we, we, we kept practicing as much as we could um, through the internet. And as soon as um, things got a little safer, we wound up recording at Nate's house with Anthony and we were all like 10 feet apart from each other uh, and recording with masks on. So that was fun. Um, so yeah, that we have a tape coming out um, this Friday on Trip Machine Laboratories. Well, okay. and what, it's going to be available what band, for what streaming. Because I know that you got like four. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Pariah. Okay. This what, one's, what is uh, it again? This Sorry. band is called Pariah. Pariah. Okay. Got it. And so there's also so that's that's this there's Friday. Omega there's Omega Glory and War Camps, and I mean just keep just and keep going keep going about it because I and honestly, Dead Torches and Dead Torches. Okay. So <clears throat> all right. I've heard I've only heard Omega Glory, and that was sort of like a okay ass suck grindcore style and yes. that, that, uh, your guitar tone is fucking insane on that um i'm guessing nice. you did it on a drop computer. a drop a of course i i <laughs> I, I did but i also i also uh went through one of my amps over there and uh went through the back of the head into my interface it's uh i was layering guitars like you know a champ and I never did this stuff before, but I had all the time in the world during the lockdown. So I figured some stuff out. Um, Omega Glory, we just had um, State of Mind put out a, uh, a seven inch lathe and that sold out. Um, we have a tape of that same recording, the six songs coming soon and a second press of that uh, seven inch lathe that's going to happen eventually soon. Um, is that band with Ross? War Camps. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. That's just um, Sean McCann from um, Perjaza and Celebrity Murders and Murdoch, The Dying Light. Um, he plays, he, he's, uh, he's a great bassist and he's a fin uh, fantastic drummer. But in that band, he just play he just sings. Cool. So I programmed the drums and I played the bass and like seven guitars. <laughs> Look at you. Magic That's, man. <laughs> it just sounds like a, a vacuum. Yeah. <laughs> so moving on. Um, Dead Torches is a band with Ross. It's basically Man Alive, but shorter, faster, and heavier. Um. And fuck, I forgot so, about yeah, Man Alive. So four I love guys Man Alive. from Man Alive. Oh fuck. I totally yeah. forgot about that. See? Shit. I think that was the last I think the last time I saw you was when Man Alive played with um Butoid Man. Yes. At Vitus. Yes. Yeah, so that, that was, was fucking was awesome. A long time ago. <laughs> that was a good time. So continue, so, yeah, that, continue, continue we, all um, of them. 
All right. Uh, Dead Torches, we have about, I wrote uh, 14 songs during the quarantine, and we recorded seven of them. And uh, that's going to be a seven inch coming out on Hell Minded Records. They just uh, put out the Shades Apart and Second Arrows record. Um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. So so let, let, let me and ask then, you this. Like, what, go ahead, continue. Do, do the next one, yes. and then we can talk about where all this is coming from. Oh, no. From. All right. All right. So then uh, War Camps is with the band with Tim Chunks, uh, Amory from Suicide and Bill, the bass player from Band of Forces. I don't know how that happened, but... Hey, uh, everybody's a hardcore kid. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 who knew? Could be. But, um, who knows? So we're, we have about eight songs, and Tim has to finish vocals on a couple. He said to say hello, by the way. He's a I big fan of it. yours. I fucking miss um, that guy. What what uh, so, so what what does War Camp sound like? Uh, that's just like, like straight up like, uh, old school hardcore. Like, um, we were going for like negative approach seven inch feel. Ah, uh, sweet. Okay. Just like raw. Yeah, I mean it's uh, uh by the way, negative approach is still a great band. Uh, live, fucking yeah. insane. Um, it's incredible John that Brown those guys. Can... Terrifying individual. It's crazy that, that, that yeah, I, I mean, watching them play at Vitus was like, what the fuck? Like, you know, it was almost as cool as Poison Idea, yeah. but like fucking, you're just like, holy shit. Like, this guy's so fucking real. I wish Laughing Hyenas could have played. Yeah. Um, but yeah, oh. like what, uh, like where, where are you coming from with all this? Like, so, because it all is all very different, you know, <laughs> like they're, they're I'm definitely feeling like yeah. way more metal tinge than i'm used to hearing from you yeah. um but like like right where are you finding the inspiration what's where is it coming from well um when when everything locked down and i was still going to the city to go to work every day it was it was completely like barren and desolate and it was kind of terrifying then i was coming home from work and I would go like food shopping for my family. And it was right when people started wearing masks everywhere, but before it was mandated. And I was looking around and it was like this really crazy apocalyptic feel to it. And I didn't, you know, like I was really getting weirded out by the feel. And it just like brought me to a weird dark place and I don't know. I just started like delving into more like heavy music, and I was like, I wonder, you know, if I could get to um, what I'm hearing and what I like. And I was able to get some stuff that I'm pretty with, like the Omega Glory stuff. I love. It's I it's fucking happy. cool, man. It's like it's. I mean, it's fucking bleak, for sure. And I, I'm psyched yeah. that you like work so hard on the guitar tones because. You know, like that reminds it. Like as soon as you put it on, as soon as I put it on, when I listened to it, I was like, it reminded me of the guitar tones from a Godflesh record, but mixed with nice. like the the intensity of an Ass Suck record. You know, it's like, but then like a lot of there's so much so much is like I I always harken back when I hear grindy shit to Ass Suck, but so many so much progression has been done over the years with grindcore. You know, right. between Pig Destroyer and, and uh, you know, like there's just so many bands that have done really interesting things with the genre. Um, but right. it, it has an old school feel, but a new school heaviness to it. And it's uh, it's right. really cool. I, I, I have to say, I haven't heard any of the other stuff you've done. Uh, and part of the reason I asked you to be on this was because I wanted you to talk about this new stuff because you got at least you can try and sell it in the world's most ghetto way on the age of quarantine yeah. but <laughs> yeah. oh. talking to my lame ass but yeah um, it's uh yeah i'm psyched that you're still doing shit and you feel inspired to uh, be angry um still in that way yeah it took me like, like Artie Artie uh white made a, a like a comment years ago 
he was like, oh, he's like, you know, you, you stopped being as angry as I remember. And I contribute a lot of that to me, you know, becoming a father and I kind of lightened up. But my, my kid's uh, 13 now and that anger is snapped right back. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm as short fused and as angry as I've ever been. So wait, I, wait, when Artie said that, when Artie said that, had he had a kid yet? No. Because I've never seen anybody no. soften more than him. <laughs> oh, I know. It's it's glorious to watch. <laughs> and he, I love I love seeing it. Yeah, and me has, too. Me too, actually. The, yeah. He has the most beautiful family too. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's interesting. It's interesting to also to watch his sarcastic Facebook posts go like to, um, "Hey, happy birthday!" It's like Artie would never say happy birthday to anybody. I know. You know, without some sort of shitty joke. Yeah, and it's like it's like now it's like, hey man, happy birthday! All right, great. I'm like, yo, dude, where is that guy? Maybe he'll come back when when the kids are older. Yeah. But he, but he's gonna be like fucking sixty, like me. Like you know, my 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 kid's <laughs> only six, and you know, and she's gonna graduate high school when I'm sixty, which is crazy if I make it that long. But yeah, man, it's it's uh, I, I I'm I'm just like uh, so I wanna I wanted to go back um a little bit because I did a series of interviews with people uh, week after week uh, from the Long Island hardcore scene. Um, and uh, okay. it was kind of cool because it felt very progressive, like Derek and Tommy, uh, you know, like, like everybody, right. like uh, Tim, Tim Williams, uh, you know, what, where is your head about that whole scene and the importance in not maybe I'm not going to say importance because that's sort of grand grandiose, but um I I made a comment recently online about how we kind of picked up the ball when the city kind of dropped it. And it, that's I got absolutely a lot true. of shit. I got a lot of shit for it. Um, and, you know, <laughs> how do you feel about the way that we all sort of, the wreckage scene, all that shit, like how that was impacted the, the future and the, and the progression of hardcore moving on as a genre? I you're I be, I agree with you about the city. I mean, there was shows every so often that wasn't a ska show at the Wetlands. CB stopped doing shows because of the shutdown. Um, the Bond Street had shows once in a blue moon. ABC No Rio was always there, and you know that was that. I found myself going there more than like say under Acme. Or uh, yeah, the I orange mean, bear. The I, feel other like, I feel like places. we. I feel like all of the kids on Long Island. We all did. We all felt, at least the kids that were like more involved, were going to ABC in Rio more than anything, for sure. Right, but the shows on Long Island that you and Artie were uh, doing, the, those were that was constant. It was weekly, and it was a place for everyone to go and see uh, bands that you wouldn't see. I mean, how many times did the Bouncing Souls play the Angle? You know when they were a lot. Like, just getting over there, the funk part of their career. <laughs> um, but when they got when they got but, over the funk part, though, they got that was their that was their sweet spot. That was like the the eight ball EP. Yeah, all that shit. That was oh yes, spot. The, the green ball and EP. Then, and then when they got signed to Epitaph, it kind of was like, eh. like just like every other band that went into Rancid Land, kind of was like, eh, all right. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I, 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 I would never come down on them because I, I love them. And I think, but they, they had a sweet spot there where they were so original right. and so cool. And, you know, not that they didn't lose their spirit, yeah. but like they just got a little bit like too punk for me, but maybe perfect for other people, which is great. I always say, Brian, it's, it, not, it's, for, it's so not for me. For it's for not for people, me to like. Still going. It's just not for me to like. That's all. Right. It's not for me to like. Right. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, so, so, so but yeah, continue. When, we, when you guys were doing the shows, they, um, it, they were consistent. You know, it was something that the city didn't have. It had that consistency. And it had, you know, Artie would put on the most diverse shows. So there was something for everybody. And then once the angle stopped, other uh, sure happening um, different places like VFW halls, basements, um, then PWAC, it was, you know, it was 
about consistency, and that's why you know, fans like Avail was like, like mm, you know, maybe we will play Long Island and Fugazi, stuff like that. It was, it was a great time. It was yeah, a great time I mean, period. I, I, well, we we created a a place for for people to come and tour, but also like, um, and you can probably talk to this experience as well, where we. Uh, when I interviewed Artie on this, like I, I, we talked quite a bit about our experiences in Europe in the early '90s, and the way that the bands were treated, and how, you know, like it was an experience that we would never expected, and we came back from that from those tours, going like, wouldn't it be cool to like have a place that we could feed Be-band. and house yeah. and take care of people in the right way? And I feel like that was also a huge part of it, but there was also a shit ton of kids ready and willing to come out and see the shows and, and uh, experience stuff. I mean, I, I, I can't even, I can't count on a thousand hands the amount of people I've met who saw shows for the first time, either at the Angle or at the PWAC and, you know, like, and our career music people, you know, and that's, that's so, yeah. it's, that's a, fucking moving man that's fucking like the shit and you know you were a big part of that you really really were and you know i i, I hope that you know, the work that you did with millhouse and and uh, and whatnot is you know not downplayed in your head at all because it was fucking pretty cool i mean i know it's not cool to think you're great but <laughs> <laughs> if you want i'll get my wife and my daughter in here and they'll they'll just tell you how great i'm not <laughs> I'll just shoot that right down. Uh, yeah, my my uh, my my daughter uh, loves to do that as well. Um, oh, Timmy Chunk says hi. Hi, Tim. Um, oh, but yeah, it's uh, it, it's I think I think it's a it's a cool legacy. Um, and I, I I wish that the documentary had gotten finished and whatnot, or there would be something that sort of depicted a lot of it. I mean, uh, I don't know if you saw that Derek Schilling moved from Long Island today. He moved to North yeah. Carolina. Yeah. North Carolina or something? Yeah. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. I mean, I have a feeling he's going to he's gonna wind up in a band in no time out there. Oh, yeah, with Rick to Life or something, yeah. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think a bunch of the tension guys are out there. Uh, probably. I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, I haven't, uh, I haven't really been out on Long Island in a long time, so, uh, I mean... I've been out there, but I haven't really paid a lot of attention. And now that George Reynolds is gone in Las Vegas, I really don't, uh, yeah. you know, it's, I, I'd, I'd go out to see Scott and John, but you know, it, I haven't. So we only need, um, we, we only use the Modern Matter shows as an excuse to fucking hang out and maybe play a couple of songs here and there. But um, so what's, what's going, are you going to play like when live music comes back? Are you planning on, playing with any of these new bands or what yeah yeah um dead torches is an, an actual band pariah is an actual band omega glory the best thing that could have happened happened elway from cr and celebrity murders texted me he's like hey i heard these songs i don't know what you're planning on doing with them but i'm gonna learn how to play them just in case so having somebody like elway uh, behind the drums is the only, he's the only person I can play these songs and like imagine playing the drums. So, cool. I mean, be... it'll be, it, yeah, it's like, it's, I know it's like, uh, it's a difficult thing to sort of envision at this point for, uh, yeah, I, I mean, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? You, you own two bars. How, <laughs> how are you functioning here? Um, like, what's happening? I'm on prescription drugs to deal with my anxiety. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, you know, I, I basically, uh, I'm just dealing with life, man. You know, it's like, uh, I, you know, St. Vitus is closed um, for yeah. probably until mid next year. And uh, if not even later, and uh, the bar that I'm sitting in the basement of right now, um, that's been my focus and I'm just keeping it open and making sure the, the locals are happy um it's uh Good. it it's shitty and it's really really fucking hard and uh I, I i never realized uh how fucked up my head was until this whole thing happened but uh i'm dealing with it and 
you know, it's, uh, I, 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 I gotta be there for my family and try and make some money and, uh, and not be a complete fucking crazy head case. I mean, it, in the beginning of this thing, man, it was like, I, you know, it was really hard. And then they made it even harder by putting all these regulations on things and then changing it every day. And we right, never knew right, right. who was watching you. And like, they made yeah, this Gestapo to... feel and it's just like, you know, Cuomo's a fucking piece of work and de Blasio is like a pussy. So, I mean, I, I don't really know, like between the two of them, they can all go fuck themselves and they should just leave us alone because we yeah. all like, this is the thing about service and in general is that nobody wants to serve a shitty burger. No one wants to serve a drink that's going to hurt someone. No one wants their customers to go away unhappy. They want people to be happy. And, and so right. if we create an atmosphere that makes people happy where they feel safe, then we should be allowed to do what we need to do. And, 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 and I, I, you know, I don't mind the earlier hours to tell you the truth, because at least I can have a real life. You know, it's, it's a right. lot easier to get up with my daughter. We're, you know, we're paying for private school now so she can go every day. My, my daughter's yes. in Catholic school, ironically. Isn't that great? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you did it. What, what about you? What, your, daughter's, <laughs> your daughter's 13. She's like a soccer champ, right? Yeah, she, she's, I, I raced home from her practice so I can do this. <laughs> she's she's still going. She uh, tomorrow night she has goalkeeping training. Friday night she has a game, and Saturday she has a friendly game. Is so there no uh, is there no restrictions for all that shit in Jersey? There are there are indoor restrictions, and actually the, they just gave outdoor restrictions. You can't have more than 150 people at an event. So you have to. I mean, you used to be able to have 150. Now you can only have 25. So they're limiting like parents. So, uh, um, gotcha. But okay. in, they stopped. They stopped indoor stuff until um, January. So, as soon as January rolls around, she'll be back to playing indoors. So. Is that a? So she's in what? Like tenth grade? No, no, man, you're bad Not, at this. Uh, she's sorry. the eighth. Eighth. Okay. Sorry. Eighth. She, she. So she goes to high school next year. I was super young, so I was like, I was in 10th grade, I was 14 in 10th grade, so you know, I was like, I, I, I fuck this up all the time, but um, so, uh, oh, genius. <laughs> no, not really, just weird birthday, <laughs> but um, yeah, so, so that's awesome, man, like, it's, that's so cool, it, like, I, I check, I see your Facebook posts all the time, and she's like, so involved in like, kicking ass, I mean, I hope, I hope that she's, at the right age where this goes away and you know, like she'll play further into high school and maybe be able to go right. on and yeah, do that's... something cool. Cause right. I feel, I that, feel bad. I feel, I feel bad for like juniors and seniors in high school right now who are like sort of yeah, jockeying okay. to deal with shit. Right. My, my niece uh, just had an ordeal where um, she plays softball and Villanova was looking at her and they they were looking to give her an offer to come pay for them and they backed it off and then she had nobody and then thankfully Hofstra gave her an offer and you know she didn't want to go to school on Long Island because she didn't want to go out on the weekends and run into uh my brother and his wife like at a bar or something and she'd be like ugh you <laughs> so but I'm excited because I, now I get to go and see her play. Oh, that's cool. If, I mean, I, you're if, a, if we if we get back to playing sports. So you're you're a big Premier League guy, right? Yeah. What's your What's your team? Yeah. Arsenal. Arsenal. All right. My uh, having my, a ter terrible season. My resident. Uh, uh, no, sorry. My 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 resident tour manager is Chelsea, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I have yeah. way too much experience with the with the English <clears throat> Premier League. Um, I never chose a team, so. No, it, that's probably uh, the I'd, best I'd have way to go. To go. Just enjoy. I'd have to go. I just I just follow Oasis and go Manchester City because oh, you yeah. know. I'm going to Manchester. City. Yeah, I mean because they're really they're good now, right? Awful. Are they? Oh, yeah, well, no. No, they're go. doing terrible. 
All right, well, I'm going to wrap it. Um, yes. Thank you so much, Bri. It's fucking great to catch up with you. I'm sorry we have to do thank it in you. public, but we can do it in yes. private again uh, at another time. But I wanted you to get all your fucking bands out there so people knew about what you were up to. Um, and I, I love you. You're much. the fucking shit. Thank and you, keep fucking playing, dude. You're, in, you're inspiring will. me. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Later, Take bro. care. Love you too, man.